there's also a lot going on yeah. and it's um I think it's going to be the most trying the most yeah. trying uh, emotionally for me to perform mm-hmm. as far as the seasons go What's up, everyone? Tanya here with popculture.com, and I'm so excited to welcome award winning actress, musician, and This Is Us star Chrissy Metz. Chrissy, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited. So, be- you know, before we get into it, congrats on everything, especially This Is Us, which has been our favorite show. Um, but we are in the end game now. So, how are you feeling? I'm feeling all the things right? Like, I think there's like seven base emotions. I'm feeling all the things at any given moment, you know, I'm like elated, I'm sad, I'm, you know, distraught, and then I'm like ecstatic. And I'm just so grateful to have had this opportunity. I mean, it completely, of course, changed my life. Mm -hmm. Um, But also has changed so many people's lives that it's, it's so much more than just a TV show that we watch for entertainment. Um, So yeah, I'm feeling all the things. Yeah. And I know last night's episode, I don't know if you got to see it as yet, (gasps) but Full on sobs. I was yeah. like hiding behind my shirt. I couldn't show my sister. I was crying so much, but you know, I'm not going to ask for any spoilers, but how do you think fans are going to respond to these next episodes that are leading to the finale? These are, I mean, we're sort of like summing up, you know, five years of, of so many lives and not just five years, but like, you know, obviously countless years of, of this family's uh, life together. And whether it's Kate and Toby and the unraveling of their relationship or Rebecca and her diagnosis and what's happening and, you know, all the things, who knows what's Randall, what position of office Randall's going to be running for and who Kevin's going to be dating. You know, there's all sorts of things happening, um, which makes it for a very exciting final season, but there's also a lot going on and it's um, I think it's going to be the most trying the most yeah. trying uh, emotionally for me to perform mm-hmm. as far as the seasons go, but it's going to be amazing. Yeah. I can, I can already tell, like, I know all of us, like from the reaction from fans too, like everyone is so dedicated and committed to watching the rest of the show. And, you know, Kate has been one of our favorite characters, one of mine, mine, especially because like mm-hmm. she's grown so much and there's like an agency now in her decisions and how she is as a mother with her kids. And, you know, without spoiling it, like, where do you want to see Kate? Like, do you have any, I know you've grown with that character too. She's been so personal to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, she really has, she's lived most of her life with so much shame and so much guilt about her father's death and feeling responsible for it, but also not feeling good enough in, in any capacity. And now that she's really taken sort of her life by the reins and she's like, Oh, I get to navigate this. I get to determine where I'm going and everything that she's gone through. And I think so much of it was, you know, her standing up to Mark and all the things that she has done for herself Mm -hmm. and becoming a mother. And I think people change significantly when they're responsible for other human beings. And, you know, there's just so many ways that she's, she's grown and, it's, it's wonderful to see that be a possibility, but also to see her follow through on that. And we're going to see that as far as it goes uh, with Kate and Toby's relationship, because there are things that are going to transpire that are not easy, are not easy for her to make decisions about without giving too much away. Yeah. And I know that all those little Easter eggs we saw from last season, yeah. it's going to be explosive. I can imagine yeah. if you can use this. Yeah. Yeah, if you could use a superlative to like describe this last season, what would it be? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. One word. Um, <laughs> Maybe a few words if you want to make like a sentence. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I think it's bittersweet, heartbreakingly beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now I know all the characters on the show go through a journey, but you, and you actually had your own off-screen journey with your first car, which brings mm-hmm. us to your partnership with Capital One Auto Navigator. Uh, yeah. So tell us about it. Yeah. I mean, my journey with my first car, I mean, it's essential to have a car in LA while you're pursuing acting. Mm-hmm. And luckily it got me to all my auditions and got me to this place that I'm here talking to you about this amazing job and yeah. it, being able to sort of chat about Capital One Auto Navigator with everybody. It's like exciting because I think that opportunities really provide so much empowerment and that accessibility, whether you're going on auditions or, you know, 
finding your dream job or whatever it is that you're doing, when you can simply go and find what car, whether it's a dream car or the car that you need right now, and you want a a specific color or a specific leather or whatever it is that you're looking for, then you can easily access that and find out and then pre-qualify and do all that legwork before you get to the dealership. Then when you get to the dealership, like the exciting part is like the test drive. Yeah. And so it's really cool because you get to pre-qualify, but it doesn't ding your credit, Mm -hmm. which we love that. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just, it's really cool to like know your rate and like what your monthly payments might be before you even get to the dealership. So it's just so convenient and it makes it easier and a little less scary, I think, Yeah. you know, because it's scary. It is scary, buying, territory. Yeah. yeah. Buying your first car is like a huge milestone. And then it's like to have like all these, all this paperwork to sign, like look at your credit report. And it's right. a lot like I can just imagine. So this is a great app to help people with. It's awesome. I'm like, I wish this was around, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like, it's just going to be so helpful and it's just going to, it's so user-friendly that yeah. it just sort of takes the scaries away. Yeah. I think very much. Yeah. So, you know, being the voice of this, you faced also many hurdles with buying your first car. What advice do you have for new car owners? Oh, wow. That's a great question. I think that, you know, you have delusions sometimes of grandeur and I'm like, Christy, what can you afford? Yeah. What can you afford to feel good about? Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want to strap yourself that you can't have that coffee or go on, you know, um, out to dinner with friends or something. I would say definitely find something that you like and that you can afford and know that it's probably not going to be your last car. Yeah. You know, it could be just the sort of an interim car or it maybe is your dream car. Mm -hmm. I just think that it's important to determine what you can afford and how that that's going to, to fit into your whole life. Yeah. Because sometimes I'm like, how could, what, like, what do you do? Do you have any other money to do anything else? You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think that just being sort of practical and, mm-hmm. you know, wanting a car that obviously is safe and that you feel good about, but can you afford it? That That's for me. I don't know if that's because of the way I was raised, but yeah. that's number one for me. And also know that, you know, um, it might not be your, your last car ever. Yeah. Do you remember your first car? What was your first car? Oh my gosh, do I? I wrote a song about it. It was (laughs) in a music video of mine. Yeah, girl, (laughs) girl, go. Yeah, Yeah, of course I remember my first car. And it's it's one of those things that I was so excited. I remember my stepdad was like, okay, if you match me a thousand dollars, we'll put the down payment. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm really getting a car. Cause I didn't even get my license till I was probably 20. Cause my parents were like, you, yeah, let's just wait. I'm like, no, I don't want to wait anymore. So mm-hmm. yeah, I vividly remember it. And it, it really got me, I mean, it got me all the way out here to LA yeah. and went through a, a lot of, a lot of auditions. I took a lot of kids on auditions, a lot of, mm-hmm. of my manager's clients. Um, it really, it pulled through. Yeah. And you know, um, one of the things that I love so much about being in a car is obviously the music we get to sit and sing and all that stuff. So I want to get into your music really quickly. I know I love the song actress. I love girl go. Um, your voice is so beautiful and I'm so happy that we get to like, hear you also sing on this is us. And then you're also getting now an album coming out. So can you tell us about your album is, are we going to expect it this year? I hope so. Oh boy, do I hope so. It's been tricky. I had a a whole um, tour planned right before the the pandemic, Mm -hmm. which many, many musicians of course did. And I was so looking forward to, but what has afforded me this time is, is more in-depth songs and really sort of writing from a place of healing, but also hurt Mm -hmm. Um, and the catharsis and sort of bridging those, those two together because I realized even after writing my book that I was like, oh, there's some things I talked about that I'm not really over and maybe I should write a song about it. And so, (laughs) you know, there's, there's, um, some fun, there's some heartbreak, there's some, uh, life lessons for sure. And Mm -hmm. also I sort of grew up doing the comparing and despairing thing and sort of always thinking, oh, I'm never going to look like that person or he likes her more or whatever. And, um, it's just a very intimate, very real, raw sort of um, storytelling of of my past, you know, really ten years of my life. So yeah, well, I yeah. always I always feel like you know songwriting, like your music, especially when I'm hearing it, it's so from the heart, like it's so mm-hmm. deep, and it's the best way to heal your broken heart. And I always feel like make your you know broken heart turns into art. 
It's beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Chrissy, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today. Thank you so much. And congrats on This Is Us. Um, guys, you. for more with Chrissy, keep it locked to popculture.com for the latest.